Hello and welcome back it's to the Big Blue Purple channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Elden Ring, the best game ever made. Maybe. No, but seriously, I've been playing this game fucking non-stop for like two weeks now, and that's why I haven't uploaded shit, and I have amassed like 130 hours on the game, and gotten all the achievements at this point. This game's fucking fantastic. It's so much fun. It's so good, and there's so much to do. And I totally want to make a video where I just gush about it, and I talk about what I like and what I don't like, and I just kind of give a review of the game, kind of. But, um, today's not the day where I review the game, because instead, we're going to look at some funny-ass Steam reviews. Let's do it. Game is fine, but progression is bad. You go exploring around the world, but you don't find weapons or crafting materials, besides flowers. You can't summon your horse when you summon someone. I have mixed feelings with this game. DS3 is way better. Really strong start with this one, alright? So the progression is the problem, but the game, the game's just fine. The game's fine. But DS3 is better, of course. Anyway, about this whole you don't find weapons or crafting materials, I don't know what direction you went in when you started the game, but I definitely found a lot of weapons and crafting materials um, in a lot of caves around Limgrave. There's a... Uh, a tunnel system in Limgrave. I think it's just called Limgrave Tunnels. Where there's like a shit ton of smithing stones down there. You can get your first weapon all the way up to plus three. Just by going down there. Um, weapons are pretty damn easy to find in my experience. Especially strength weapons. I swear every fucking enemy in this game drops a strength weapon. So, uh, yeah. Other, well, I, anyways, this kind of just a player end problem. Like, fair enough, I guess. And then... You can't summon your horse when you summon someone. I haven't actually summoned anyone, so I'm not sure. But if that is true, that kind of sucks. Like, I imagine in summoning in Radon, like, real players, probably becomes a bad strategy because you need your horse for that fight. So, hey, that's a fair complaint. Got to give them that one. But uh, Dark Souls 3 is, uh, is way better, guys. So keep that in mind before you buy this game. Dark Souls 3 is way better. Alright, so this next guy says, Worst game I have ever played. Not worth $80. All the Dark Souls games are better. Millennia is the dumbest, most broken boss ever. Biggest waste of 80 hours. Do not buy. Now this one's particularly enjoyable to me because a singular boss was enough to do this guy in. And not just a mandatory boss or something that you need to progress the story, but a hidden boss within a hidden area that's completely optional and designed around being the greatest challenge in the game. Well, alright. She is hard. I wouldn't call her broken. Um, the fight is kind of designed around you not making any mistakes. It's like this dance of of these of a sword fight. It's really sick. It's a really fucking cool fight, man. It's tough. It was definitely the hardest fight in the game for me as well. But I had a lot of fun like going through it. Um... But yeah, I guess this boss alone is the reason that this game is not worth $80, and it's the biggest waste of 80 hours. Um, I would say it, it took me 80 hours to get to her in the first place. So, like, if your goal is only to fight Millennia, and then you realize that you don't like Millennia, then maybe it is a waste of 80 hours. But I don't really think that's why people are buying this game, and Millennia is an extremely optional boss. And I don't want to just be like, oh, get good, like the fucking FromSoft tards out there. Because, like, those people give these games such a horrible reputation, and it's why, like, new players are so hesitant to, to try them. And so I, I want to avoid that kind of thing with Elden Ring, because so many new people are trying this game. It's not good for the community to just be like, oh, get good, oh, just fucking, like, play better, dude. And, like, just, just, just dodge their attacks, like, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah. They do need to get better, obviously. <laughs> but, like, it's not a good way to deflect all criticisms. This review in particular uh, kind of is. Kind of is a good way to deflect this criticism. But we'll talk more about that later. Dark Souls 2 was better, in my opinion. Bro, this dude is straight up fucking evil. That's not very nice, bro. You said Dark Souls 2 was better. That's fucked up. Like, that's like shit in a bag is better than Elden Ring, guys. But, anyway. I'm not gonna bring my Dark Souls 2 hate into this video right now, but I don't like that game. I have a lot of issues with it. 
I've beaten it several times and it never gets better. Um, I'm the only build I haven't tried in it is a mage, so maybe that's when the game gets fun is when you play mage. I don't know. I don't like Dark Souls 2. I think it's fucking awful. But Elden Ring is not awful, and it is not worse than Dark Souls 2. All right, boys, we got a fucking massive one. I got I had to separate this into two screenshots because it's so damn long. Let's let's do it. This is not a popular opinion right now. While Elden Ring is flavor of the month, but I believe this is a game full of lazy game design and problems. I'll explain more. All right. Okay, I've played it. DS one, two, three, Sekiro, Cuphead, Code Vein, Hollow Knight, Blasphemous, etc. I'm quite used to playing Souls-like slash hard games that push your patience. I find the start to the review absolutely fucking hilarious, to be honest. That, like, the FromSoft community has is just, like, so toxic when someone criticizes their games that this motherfucker had to preface it by saying he's played every hard game ever made. It, it, it's so funny. Like, Cuphead, bro, yeah. Like, that, that really changes how I'm going to view your opinion on this game. You've played Cuphead. So you're you're so much more qualified to talk about Elden Ring. Great. It's like if you don't like the game, that's okay, and you should just say that, and you should explain why, and that's all right. And I'm gonna make fun of you for it anyway because that's what I'm doing in this video. But when you preface your review with this shit, it just makes you ten times more easy to make fun of. Like, come on, dude. Like, you played so many hard games, so you're more qualified to talk about Elden Ring. Anyway, basically that whole, like, first paragraph there is just him going over how fucking great he is for, and how experienced he is in the, in the franchise or whatever. So starting the review, he says, 95% of the bosses in this game are the same. They don't look the same, but they play the same. They flip around the room, swiping all over the place with a long weapon, and give you a brief moment to get one hit in before they do the same again. Wow, this is fucking brutal. The the bosses attack you and have patterns? And you're saying all of them do that? Wow. Some are even just a reskin and rename of previous bosses. Well, there's actually literally, like, duplicate bosses in this game because it's a massive open world that's, like, okay. It's not like... The main bosses are duplicates of each other. The main bosses are all individually unique, and that's the point. There's tons of unique bosses. It's just there's there's several different variations of the same boss throughout the open world that get harder as you progress later into the open world. I think that's great. I Would you rather there be no extra mini-bosses? Like, there's 170 bosses in this game. I don't expect From Software to design 170 unique bosses. If you commit more than one hit, they use an AoE to break your combo and continue flipping around. Oh shit, dude, if you get greedy, they punish you? God damn, this is such a unique concept. They've never done that before. Um, anyway, on the topic of AoEs, though, um, the reason there's so many AoEs in this game is actually because you have a jump button. And you can jump a lot of those AoEs. And I'm not saying this in a condescending way. I actually didn't realize this for a lot of my playthrough. But a ton of those attacks that seem kind of bullshit and, like, way too quick to roll out of, you can jump. And that's the point. So never forget about that jump button. The game very much is designed around you having it. <laughs> On the open world, you get loads of bosses, but they're the same as each other as well. I just kind of talked about this. Um, the last thing that most bosses do is some kind of one-shot or combo to insta-kill you. All of them do this. Um... Yeah, all the bosses have, like, a 10-hit combo that if you get caught in, you're probably going to die. But once you see it the first time, you should be very wary of the startup of it. I mean, I feel like Elden Ring is kind of designed around a more dance playstyle than a, like, Dark Souls 3 wing it fucking spam roll playstyle. Because Dark Souls 3 really just let you spam roll. Elden Ring doesn't let you do that because the bosses have a lot of delays and, um combos that'll fuck you up if you just spam roll i'm level 160 and vastly over leveled for the first playthrough i still get one shot by bosses so the process for all bosses is watch them flip around hit once and then once they use their one shot dodge it well if you figured that much out then you're good job like i mean 
as this guy playing a strength build and he's complaining that that's how a strength build works you 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 swing your big sword that does a lot of damage like once and then you get out or or what but yeah like a lot of things do do a lot of damage in this game and i think that's the point like the things that do a lot of damage are highly telegraphed and once you see them once you'll be able to avoid them anyways moving on he says areas are boring in this game whoa I can barely remember the names of the areas. I remember the High Wall of Lothric, Majula, and Blight Town, but I can't name most places in this. Uh, I don't even know where to start with this one, to be honest. Like, you remember the first area from Dark Souls 3, the hub in Dark Souls 2, and the most, like, infamous area in the soul series history yes very good okay i think elden ring locations are more memorable because the absolute size of them like you obviously there's the, the legacy dungeons and stuff that have their own names but when you just think about the open world it's d divided into the fucking whatever it is eight regions or something and i remember the name of all of those regions just from playing I, I don't really know if that's special. If you guys played Elden Ring, let me know in the comments if you remember the names of the areas you were exploring. Because I do. Um, I, I, should, I suppose I played the shit out of this game. I have 130 hours. But th this guy has 106. So, hey. He put 20 hours in after, after this review, which is pretty funny. But, yeah. L let me know in the comments below. Do you think the areas in this game are uh, forgettable? The world is open, and you can explore for weeks before exhausting it, but it's a largely empty space in between dungeons. Um, no. There's a lot of runes, uh, which usually have their own treasure chest in them, and a whole group of enemies you can fight. There's those walking mods. Like, there's so much around the world, man. One, one thing, like, on my first playthrough of Elden Ring that really blew me away was, like, every fucking five minutes, something would catch my eye. And I, I'd be doing something completely distracted for a whole other hour that was not my objective. And then I'm like, holy shit, like, what am I doing? I completely forgot about this other thing I wanted to do because I saw this one cave in the distance and then spent an hour going that way. Or whatever. And exploring all that shit. And, and there is a lot of open space in the open world, but it's, it's remedied by you having a horse that's extremely fast. Like, the horse in this game is not by any means slow. The second area is a huge lake, just one large expanse of water with mobs scattered around it. There are many runes and buildings, but on inspection, inspection, none of them have doors, and you can't get in to explore it. It's just fake fairground scenery thrown into a flat plain of water. Okay, so I assume he's talking about Liurnia here, um... It's saying it's the second area isn't, like, necessarily true. You, you can go fucking anywhere. It's open world. But sure. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Liurnia is the second area. Um, the middle of the area is this giant lake. And in the lake, there's a big mage academy you can go into. There's a bunch of runes around it. There's some dragons in the lake. But it's just a big open lake with nothing in it, guys. Uh, there's definitely not a whole legacy mage academy dungeon with a shard bearer in it. Nope. Just ignore that. Alright, so we're about halfway through this review. Let's get part two up here. Mobs are just mindless AI that have one setting. Kill you as soon as you walk into the building. Wow, the enemies in Elden Ring try to kill you? I expected them to shake my hand. No, but seriously, like... I don't really know what else you want them to do. And I think the AI in this game are actually really cool. There's places around the open world where you where you could find, like, camps of enemies having a fucking battle. And, uh, you could go join in and get a shit ton of souls because they're killing each other. It's great. It's really cool. It makes the world feel a lot more alive, even though it doesn't really do much. Okay, so next here he says that the mob density is massive and it could take you hours just to kill your way to a boss. Eventually you realize that it's not worth it, so you run past everything. Which then begs the question, was the game designed to just make you run past everything? Well, no, not necessarily. It just expects you to run past everything once you've already cleared the area once and know where to go. Like, if you're stuck 
on a boss and there's a run back to the boss which by the way there's not a lot of run backs in this game thankfully there's no reason for you to kill anything on your way back to that boss but like okay like isn't this a thing in every souls game like do y'all kill all the fucking enemies on your way back to bed of chaos like i don't know what to say <laughs> um second he says the ai knows where you are once it he once it hears you oh shit so wait the ai is not just mindless that have one setting they can hear you oh but that's a problem once they know you're there they will just turn towards you and either run to you and attack or if they are ranged spam ranged attacks go figure um even if your character is not in their line of sight and there are many walls between you you can hear them just standing still shooting until you walk around the corner to stop them I don't really know what your point is. Yes, the enemies try to kill you if they are aware of your presence. That's what they do. Um, that's why they're enemies. So just kill them and get good. Uh, easy to say that until you walk into a room with ten of them. Well, that's not the point. No one's telling you to just kill them and get good. There's a million different ways you can approach a scenario like that in Elden Ring. Do you want to run from it? Do you want to use certain items you have to deal with it better? Do you have a ranged weapon like a bow or do you have some magic so you can maybe split them up? I don't know, dude. There's, It's up to you. It's fucking Elden Ring. You can, like approach the game how you'd like. There's so many tools. Uh, maybe even out the odds by using spirit ashes. He says before you could split them up and the mobs would follow you until they get line of sight again and you divide and kill. Um, you, you can still do that in this game. These guys, though, just stay in place spamming. Not only does it make no sense to engage them, but it ruins your immersion because it just feels like a bot. Yes, like insane enemies that can't think and are totally just there to kill you because they're literally like fucking insane hollows or whatever the fuck breaks the immersion. I can't believe they would try to kill you. That's so weird. That totally breaks the immersion. It's... <laughs> yeah... Anyway, I just don't, I don't really get what he's saying with this. Like, this to me sounds like a thing that's been in every Dark Souls game, and I, I haven't noticed this any more egregiously than before. Like, I don't feel like the enemies are any harder to divide and kill. I've done it several times. But maybe this guy has a specific part of the game in mind that really just pissed him off and prompted this whole section of the review. I don't really know. Alright, so then he goes on to say that the crafting system is pretty underwhelming and just not a great addition to the game. Fair enough, honestly. I uh, I never really used it myself. If someone in the comments below used the crafting system and liked it, let me know. Um, I don't really have an opinion on this at all, so I'm not going to agree or disagree with him. So, he says, This is a beautiful game with amazing voice actors and writers who have put a lot of time into making this feel real. It's got memorable characters and people you really want to help. However, it's trashed immediately by the fact that you need to run past 10 million mobs who just spam in the area to get to a boss you've already seen 20 times before. Um, I actually find this a kind of odd complaint because this game, uh, uh, in comparison to other Dark Souls games, has the least runbacks. Like, there's some runbacks still, but only on, like, dungeon bosses. There's only one shard bearer with a runback, and it's not that bad. Um, so, like, runbacks in this game are, are really, really reduced. And it's great. It's one of the best things about this game. Because you can just keep bashing your head into the boss until you beat it. So he goes on to say, If they just paid a little more attention to the game and didn't just copy-paste mobs all over and make the density riddick, I'd remain immer immersed and I'd love to explore. They didn't, though. It's one step forward, three steps back. By the time you save your new friend, you barely even care anymore. When I beat Ganichiro for the first time, I had a lump in my throat because of how hard it was. When I heard the music for Gwyn for the first time and beat him, I was so proud. Beating Gale was a highlight as well. None of this gives you the same feeling. Um, I don't really know how to approach what he's saying here, because this is so fucking subjective. But I think Elden Ring does a great job at like reimbursing you, even if you're already good at these games, into feeling that again. Because the, the game is difficult in ways that the other games weren't. It's it's difficult in new ways. So like even Margit when I when I first fought him for the first time gave me a gave me a fucking hard time. Like I was stuck on him for a good little while, and that's good. That's good that the first boss in the game forces you to learn how to play the game. And I felt really good beating tons of bosses in this game, man. But again, that's kind of like a fucking hard criticism to refute or anything because I can't tell you 
that you did feel that way. If you didn't, that sucks. But, like, I definitely feel this game, for me at least, really reinvented that. More so than, um, than like, the Souls games. Here at the bottom, he says something really funny, actually. Uh, pro tip, don't lock on. The AI cannot react to your button presses the way it's programmed to if you don't lock on. If they want to break your immersion, then break theirs as well. Um, this just isn't true at all. I, uh, I've tested this. It is just, like, the AI will, will react to what you're doing, basically. Like, if you run away to chug flasks because you're about to die, the AI will punish you for that. Because they're a lot smarter in this game than they were in previous entries. And, um, not locking on will not stop them from doing that. It's just gonna put you in a worse spot. So, do not listen to that advice. Alright, so now that we've finished reading that 15-minute uh, monster of a review, um, let's look at my favorite review that I saw, which says, A giant grabbed me in-game and reached directly into my GPU to crash it. 10 out of 10 immersion. Yeah, this one gave me a good laugh, but I also think uh, it's a good way to kind of encapsulate all those reviews saying that the performance is a problem, and that's why they left a negative review. And I think that's totally fair. If the game is unplayable for whatever reason because of performance, that really fucking sucks. Like, I totally feel that. Um, for me, it hasn't been awful. I had a couple crashing issues, and I definitely, you know, ran into some stuttering issues here and there, frame drops, whatever. It didn't ruin the experience for me, but, you know, some people have different specs, whatever, and it does ruin the experience for them. So, I think it's important to include that kind of criticism in this video. But anyways, I'll end it there for now. I found a ton more of these funny reviews, so if you guys enjoyed this video and want me to make a part two, I could do that. Um, I had a lot of fun making it and reading these reviews. So yeah, thanks for watching, goats, and uh, get out there and play yourself some fucking Elden Ring.